This week, some special visitors were in New Mexico to talk about the new series, Nova, Making North America. The three-part series begins next week on New Mexico PBS. It looks at the history of our continent through biology and geology. Our producer, Sarah Gustavus, sat down with two members of the team to talk about the series and what it can tell us about the history of the place we call home, New Mexico. I'm joined today by Paula Absel, Senior Executive Producer of NOVA and NOVA Science Now and Director of the WGBH Science Unit. Thanks for being here. Great to be here. Thank you. And Dr. Kirk Johnson, Director of the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History and host of NOVA Making America. Thanks for sitting down with us. My pleasure. Paula, I'm going to start with you. Why did you want to tell this story right now, the geological history of North America? Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's 4.5 billion years, so I suppose we could have done it in two years or in two years in the past. But um, I had an experience myself. I was in Aspen, and I'm an Easterner, and um, I was uh, doing a little hiking, and the bus driver who was taking us up to the point of departure mentioned something called the Ancestral Rockies. And I didn't know what that was. And of course, I asked him and was told how the Rockies had risen and fallen any number of times. And as I did a little research, I found out that there are all sorts of surprises in North America that really, historically, this place looked nothing like it, it looks now. There was a vast inland sea. What's now New York City was surrounded by mountains as high as the Rockies. And that just seemed to me a fascinating story. And what better story to tell than the story that, of the land that we, as Americans, love so much? Billions of years of history. How do you decide what makes it into a three-part series, three hours of television? Well, that, that was pretty hard, I, I have to say. But let, let me turn yeah. to Kirk, because he was uh, you know, he was the host on the road and, and had a very formative role in, in figuring out what the stories we were going to tell are. So Kirk, tell us, how'd you decide? Well, you know, the North America is an amazing continent. It's 10 million square miles, and it's been around as a continent for over 1.8 billion years, and chunks of it are as old as 4 billion years. So there's a lot of stories to choose from. When they say, came to me and said, hey, how would you like to do a continent? I'm like, that's great. Here's my list of at least 120 places I want to go to. So you had to go with the best stories, really, and the best visuals and the best stories, and spread it around the continent, too. It couldn't all be in the Grand Canyon, for instance. It's got to have something in the Northeast and something in the Southeast and cover the whole continent. So whoever's watching actually sees their place, because part of it's about what's happening in your own backyard. Yeah. You have lots of experience working as a paleontologist out in the field. You've been a lot of places. But what was new for you and exciting for you and caught your attention? Well, I got to do things I didn't normally get to do, like rappel into the Grand Canyon or hover over the mouth of an uh, active volcano or climb ice walls. So there's a lot of active, fun stuff. And then just being able to access helicopters and fly into these amazing places that I've hiked into before. I mean, it's amazing. If you like the outdoors, you like to go there all the time. And for me to take a couple of months off of my day job running the Smithsonian's National Museum and helicopter around the most beautiful places in North America. What's not to love about that? And what role do fossils play in looking at this series? You pick some mm -hmm. up, you look at some, and, and what, what stories do they tell us about how the Earth changed? Well, when you think about it, if you look at the land, rocks tell you the story of the land, and fossils tell you the story of life on that land. And the continent's been evolving for this, this huge time period, and the fossils and the rocks kind of bounce back and forth telling you the story of the continent. And we found some amazing fossils during the show, which really illustrated that a lot of good fossils are still out there, which is something that everybody needs to know. And this is three parts, so we didn't want all three to be the same. So the first part is really the story of the land. The second part is the story of life. How did life get here? How did, how did it evolve? And it deals with creatures like dinosaurs, and we see uh, different fantastic fossils and how they're found. And the third story is really about us. How did we get here? And then how do we turn the riches of our landscape, the gold, the oil, the gas, all of the things that are beneath our feet, and turn it into a great civilization? And what will be the future of North America? Now, there wasn't any filming directly in New Mexico, correct? Well, we filmed in Mesa Verde, which isn't, you know, in, in those days, you know, millions of years ago, of course, there were no state boundaries. So mm -hmm. Mesa Verde, as I understand, is really part of the Four Corners area. And so we did, we did some extensive filming there uh, about the Anastasi culture, asking the question, how, how do they manage to get to farm, actually, in land that is actually, that's a thousand years ago, is, is pretty marginal today. So I think considering that, um, and we did a lot also about native cultures, because 
because, of course, the Native Americans were the first ones here. We do Clovis points, and that, of course, comes directly from New Mexico. So um, I think the story will be very relevant to your viewers here. And Kirk, mm -hmm. what do you think? Some relevance to New Mexico and what you found? Oh, absolutely. We do uh, episodes about how the Rocky Mountains formed, and you have the Sandia Mountains right here, which are part of that story. So, and we do talk a lot about the Cretaceous Tertiary Boundary, which is the extinction horizon of the dinosaurs. That was first discovered in Raton Pass, New Mexico. So there's, there are lots of things that tie back to the landscape, but we also talk in general about how you interpret a landscape. How do you, as you're driving across landscape, know to ask the questions that help inform you about well, what made that mountain range? How long has that canyon been there? How long has the Rio Grande Rift been rifting? Those are the kind of questions geologists always ask themselves. And we hope to inspire people to ask those questions themselves about their own backyard. In New Mexico, I call it one of the geology paradise states. It's just fabulous for rocks and geology and fossils. So uh, it's just a toolkit we're providing that people can use in their own driving around town kind of thing. We have very diverse audiences for New Mexico PBS mm -hmm. and I think for PBS across the country. What do you hope that young viewers might get out of watching this series, those young students still in school? Well, a lot of kids are not going outside that much anymore. And, and it, we go to all sorts of great places and we find amazing things. I want to just drive kids outside and drive them up into the mountains and drive them into the forest and drive them down onto the beaches because that's where they can make their own discoveries and get really excited about the planet they live on. And life is more than an iPhone. I mean, there's amazing stuff out there and it's really important for kids to experience what it's like to be out in the wilderness or up in the mountains. We, what it, oh, go ahead. We have a lot of educational activities. We have clips for teachers. We have suggested activities, lesson plans. We also have a fantastic GigaPan map with just amazing photographs, which is hosted by Bobblehead Kirk Johnson. And it really will enable people to take what they've seen in the series, but then learn more. And so that, that's something that we have that's an app that's educational, that teachers can use, that students can use, and that people can just use in their own homes. The idea is you just watch the television shows, but it's just the first step. You can use it as part of your personal exploration of the place that you live in. And Paula, what are some other ways that you think um, this series might reach a diverse audience, might educate lots of different kinds of people? Well, I think that in, in North America, we all feel that the land is ours, and indeed it is. And so this is a series for all people, all people who go outside, who look outside, who love this landscape, and who are curious about it. I mean, we are all curious about it. It also tells the story of Native Americans and how they got here around 13,000 years ago. And so I think that it will reach people to understand um, the rigors of getting to this continent and what it was like and what people had to go through and then how through human ingenuity they used the riches of the land in order to build the civilization that we have now. It'll also get us to think about the future because some of those riches like oil and gas may be hurting our planet. And so I think it's very, the third show is very thought provoking in that way. And it'll get us to think about the future of North America because really humans have only been here for a very, very short time. Let's talk about that a little bit more. Uh, what exactly in that third series are we going to learn, looking back at the history that we can use today in those conversations about climate change, oil and gas development, those issues that we're, we're dealing with right now? We do a, a sequence in Los Angeles where you know, there's 18 million people and 10 million cars, tremendous amount of fossil fuel use, and a really rapidly growing huge city. And ironically, this city is built on oil fields. I mean, the old Beverly Hills Hillbillies, the Beverly Hillbillies TV show was about oil in Los Angeles. And there are 3,000 active oil wells pumping in Los Angeles right now. The La Brea tar pits, which have these amazing Ice Age fossils, are actually animals that got trapped by evaporated oil that seeps to the surface. So the, the connection between the past and the present and the future is really well laid out in Los Angeles, which is a big car culture. So an example like that, which ties the fossils and the history together with what's happening there, and the fact when you go to Los Angeles, you know you're in for traffic, you know you're in for smog, and you know that that's also contributing to greenhouse gas and greenhouse warming. All those things sort of tie together to put the um, future of our, con of our planet in context with the past of our continent and how we're living today. I have to say that one thing I learned, I, I, I didn't realize the extent to which geology is destiny. I mean, soil. 
I did not realize that that is a geologic gift. Maybe yeah. I should have, but I didn't. And of course, that has really determined and helped us become a great agricultural powerhouse. Mm -hmm. Oil, gas, metals, gold, all of these things, we built a civilization on that. It's thought provoking that we'll have to change in some ways if we want to protect our planet and ultimately protect ourselves. It's not a huge point in the series, but it's enough so that people will think about it. And Kirk, do you see young people being interested in paleontology and geology going into the field? Look, every little kid loves dinosaurs. And so the, we always think of dinosaurs as sort of the gateway drug to science because kids are just fascinated. They go to museums. They love that stuff. And then they go into sort of a slog through high school science, which rubs the fun out of it. And it's fun all the way through. I've been doing paleontology since I was five years old, and I'm full bore. It's so exciting, the things you can discover, the places you go, the people you meet. It's a great profession. So the whole idea that we can continue to make it real for people, it's not just an animated dinosaur. It's us discovering the dinosaur in and out crop that has its own story in its own place and state. And, and so many parts of this country have incredible opportunities for kids to get out and find stuff. And it's all part of how they understand how we got here and what the story of our planet is. And it, it really a curiosity enhancer, if you will, for kids. Yeah, and just to take up what Kirk was saying, the hallmark of NOVA is that we tell stories about science, the operative word being stories. And when I learned geology in high school, really it was very theor theoretical, and I have to say it was very dull. But this is fit into a story, a story of a landscape that belongs to all of us, a story of many different parts of this country which people have seen. And I think in the context of the story of the land, life, and our own human story on this continent, it really does come alive and couldn't be and could not be more exciting. Well, thank you so much, both of you, mm -hmm. for uh, stopping by this week. We look forward to seeing the series that starts next week on New Mexico PBS. Thanks so thank much. Thank you. I'm Gene Grant. As always, we appreciate your time and effort to stay informed and engaged. And we'll see you next week in Focus. Get a preview of what's coming up on the next New Mexico in Focus. It's easy. Sign up for our weekly email at newmexicoinfocus.org.